Hello and welcome to my RC channel. Today we're going to take a look at the Runcam Swift Mini. From what I can tell, I'm pretty sure the Mini is just a shrunk down version of the original Swift. From the specs, they both look identical, aside from the size of course. I don't know for sure if this is the case, but if it is, I would see no reason to pick up the Swift or the Mini because not only does it have a more universal fit, it's actually cheaper. There's a few options that you can choose from. First of all, there's two video modes, PAL and NTSC. Then of course you have the always sexy run cam orange and also the boring black. Going even further, Runcam offers different sized lenses, all of which are infrared blocked. Um, there are three lenses, 2.5 millimeter with a 130 degree field of view, a 2.3 millimeter with a 150 degree field of view and lastly priced a little bit higher there's a 2.1 millimeter giving you a 165 degree field of view One of the things I really like about the run cams is the input voltage it accepts 5 volts all the way up to 36 volts giving you a lot of room to work with working with quads sometimes you just need a specific voltage so, you know, with the Mini, it's, it's just nice to know that no matter what voltage is needed, this camera is most likely going to work. I think the highest voltage I've ever gone up to was probably like 12 volts. So 36 volts is ridiculous. I mean, it's good to know that it's there, but I know I'll probably never use it. So here is the Swift Mini. And like I said earlier, it's just superb quality. All the run cam products that I've owned are high quality. And if it feels nice and it looks even nicer. On the back of the camera, there are two connectors. The one on the left is the main connector and the one on the right is for the OSD toggle, which is included in the package. The three holes on the side are for the included adapter, which allows the mini to fit where regular full-size cameras fit. Basically, wherever the Swift or HS1177 and other comparable cameras will fit, the mini should be able to fit as well. The reason why I say should is because after installing on one of my frames, I noticed that the mini with the adapter on was a little wider than a normal HS1177. I was still able to fit the mini on, but it was a really tight fit and I had to squeeze it in there. Okay, let's see what else we have in here. Some contact information in case you run into problems. An instructions manual explaining how to connect everything. Uh, information on the OSD settings shows you which screws to use to screw in the mount there's some good information here but I wish they would go a little bit more in depth just to explain what some of the abbreviations mean got some more accessories lots of screws in all shapes and sizes for all different purposes some are to attach the adapter and some are to attach the mount to the frame. This is a little adapter that you can leave plugged into the back of the camera to allow for easy access whenever you want to change the settings. Here's where I have mine placed. Here is the OSD joystick. It's used to modify the camera settings. A 3 pin to 3 pin connector. I cut this in half and soldered the other end to my flight controller. And lastly, Depending on what your frame requires, you'll either use the mount with the mini or the adapter with the mini. You wouldn't use both. There's been a lot of interest in smaller frames, some of which have issues with camera fitment. So I think Runcam's got something good here. With the mini, they're catering to those who require good quality camera that's just a little bit smaller. 
but then again it also has the adapter so you can pretty much use it wherever the larger size cameras fit all right so let's see some weights i have three cameras here the mini with an adapter an HS 1177 with GoPro lens and also an HS 1177 clone. First up the mini as at 15.7 grams and 12.4 grams without adapter. Next up is the clone at 12.31 grams. Wow that's a lot lighter. Next up is the HS 1177 and it's 13.97 grams so let's just say 14 grams and it is a bit heavier because of the GoPro lens so with the adapter the run cam is definitely the heaviest okay so here's a sample clip of the Swift Mini in action I recorded this with an Eoshin Pro DVR using a B-Rotor BV1 headset right off the bat you can see it's got a really good picture quality colors are rich and vibrant Objects are detailed and easy to make out, even at great distances. It was a really bright day in this clip, and the Mini performed very well. The camera never loses picture, even when the sun is in the shot. I've tested cameras before where there's a really bright source in the shot. The, it would just flood the entire picture and basically cause a temporary loss of sight. And sometimes it could last for a split second, but flying FPV with such high rates of speed, split second could mean disaster. Same thing goes with dark spots going into shady areas. The Mini does a great job maintaining a clear visible picture throughout. With the Mini, I never noticed any type of delay where the camera had to refocus because of a change in light source. In fact, it never had to refocus at all. It's definitely a great camera, especially for FPV racing. I haven't messed with the camera settings, I actually think it's already pretty good the way it's set right now. The Swift Mini is a great camera for anyone wanting a higher quality FPV experience, available now for even micros. And with that being said, this is going to be it for now. I might post some raw footage of the Swift Mini in action if I end up changing the settings later on. Thanks for watching, enjoy the rest of this flight. Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh.